My Hero Academia Season 2. I didn't like it, I thought it was shit. No, but seriously, let's actually get into the video itself. Um, I, I finished My Hero Academia Season 2 uh, just a few hours ago, actually. I'm recording this on the 31st, March 31st. And by the time you get to see this, it'll be April 1st. So I guess I wanted to do a little, you know, a little joke at the beginning of the video, but no, nah, this this is a serious, you know, review on season two because I did season one uh, like weeks ago, I think almost to a month ago. I'm not entirely sure. I'm pretty sure it was just like a, like a few weeks ago. It wasn't really too that uh, too long ago that I did it. Yeah, it was like two weeks ago. I don't know why I said it was like a month ago, but it was like two weeks ago. I did season one review, and I really liked it. I really liked season one, and I liked what you know what it offered and I liked the characters I liked you know the the quirks that some characters have I liked the main character All Might you know he's fucking awesome All Might is, is a very um, an enjoyable character to see on screen and then I got I got into like a few episodes of season 2 and then I had to do some housework no I didn't have to do it but this, there was housework that I needed to do um, so you know and I didn't want to have to deal with like with like with anything like I didn't want to be in the middle of watching an episode and then like someone has to like come into my room and like interrupt me as I'm like trying to watch an episode because if you know me you know I'm oh, excuse me you know I'm a little so socially inept you know I'm like I'm like really uncomfortable when it comes to being around like like more than just like a, a group of people that I don't know so you know I had to wait like a, a few more like days slash week to you know actually finish season two but i finished season two uh it was like episode like 13.5 to episode 38 i finished it and i really enjoyed it i really 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 enjoyed it and obviously when there's something this good out there and dragon ball super is ending and then season three is coming out next saturday um you know it's very exciting it's very exciting and um i'm really excited to see just what comes next after season or after season two yeah and then the season three uh i really enjoyed this season because it it did a lot of things that dragon ball super and even boruto is was trying to do but it did it way better or or just it just did it like just really well right and uh something that boruto is trying to do i, I was talking about this the other day with my friend right I said the other day, but yesterday, but I was talking to, I was talking about this to my friend yesterday, right? And I was talking about, all right, Dragon Ball Super, I like what it was trying to do and the ter the of power, you know, giving the other characters, you know, room to shine and show that it's like, yeah, if they're put in like this circumstance, you know, they can be like really good. And it's just like, yeah, in this circumstance where people are forcefully holding back so that way you don't so you don't fucking kill anybody because that's one of the restrictions right if they were thrown into a fight against you know goku black they would have been fucking killed they would have been fucking killed and it's basically left to fucking future trunks which even then he fucking got slapped around uh fucking goku and vegeta and then afterwards if there's someone stronger it would be it would be Whis from the current timeline and you know he can't really do anything about it so it's up to Goku, Vegeta and then Trunks, Future Trunks and basically the whole show was just like centered around Goku and Vegeta and that was like really boring and we wanted to see you know Gohan do something and you know even Krillin do something just the other characters and it didn't do that until basically the end of the series and even then most of them get eliminated and it's, it's back left to fucking Goku having to do all the fucking crazy shit and then, like, it's like, yeah, ultimately, like, Jiren gets eliminated with the help of Frieza, but you gotta think, Frieza didn't really do a whole lot. He got a few eliminations, but that was of, like, fodder, like, characters that we didn't even really get to see. So it's like, who fucking cares, you know? And then it's like, 17, he was the MVP of the whole fucking tournament of power, but against the fight with Jiren, actually, in terms of fighting against Jiren, you know towards the end of it goku would mostly did all the fucking stuff that needed to be done so who cares right and in boruto it's trying to like over accessorize you know like you know characters like personalities and stuff like that it's trying to do it but it's either overdoing it to where it's like 
you realize like the character and like how they are and it's like you don't like them so it's like you don't ever want to see them but they keep getting them like episode focused about about them or they don't talk about them nearly enough to the point where it's like you know it's like they give us an episode a whole episode about three characters one of them is kind of interesting and then the other two are just there to like pad out so that way like the ep the episode isn't just centered around one character it's centered around three characters but out of the three of them one of them is the only is really only that much interesting other more it's only a little bit more interesting than the other two and then it's not even really that good of an episode and it's like my hero academia it does that for all the fucking characters like it makes all the characters unique from each other it gives them room to like grow and then it gives it gives us as either the reader if you're if you're reading the manga or the watcher if you're watching the series it's both subbed and dubbed and, they, and they're both catched up to the same fucking episode so it doesn't matter if you're watching it subbed or dubbed you know it gives us time to you know appreciate the other characters that we see in the background as you know technical support characters like like bakugo he's technically a support character to the deku right but he's treated almost as if he is the main character himself because it gives him the series gives him room to improve and show his character and and show that he is improving and you know he's not just like this pissed off motherfucker you know just all the time it shows that you know he's actually not that much of a fucking idiot like you might actually believe he would be you know he's not just some fucking idiot that just goes in and fucking explodes shit, explodes shit with his fucking quirk no he's actually fucking smart and you know with the whole fight against like the teachers and shit by the end of season two it proved that it proved that it's like yeah he's kind of an idiot but when he, when he needs to he's actually not a fucking moron he actually knows what he needs to do and he knows his limitations but it doesn't fucking matter because he still tries and then it does that for it does that for literally all the other characters. Some you see more than others, but it still eventually does give us you know time to really appreciate said character by not giving them just like their own focused episode, but make but by making them like a support enough cast to the main character to where they're still interesting and that we still care about them and you can't really do that with the teachers and that's understandable but they're so cool and they're so interesting that it almost doesn't even matter like the ua high school staff right you know there's all these other these all these teachers and shit and we don't really see too much of them but when we do see them you know they're they're cool they have interesting character designs their voices are really cool just all this other shit right they're all just so fucking cool and interesting but it's like you know you don't really like you could use character development i guess but it doesn't really need it because they're so interesting as is anyways so it's like who cares almost right but when the mo the main focus is class 1a you know with this the class that deku is in they have they give us a whole fucking tournament arc in the beginning of season two i'm 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 like going all over the place but the season two starts with you know deku and all the entire the entire school going in into like kind of like a tournament style like yeah, like like from original Dragon Ball. Uh, I don't know what the name of the arc is, but it's it's like a tournament style arc, and I really liked what they did with this. I really liked what they did with this because, you know, they restricted a lot of the characters and their quirks. Like the reason why, you know, the characters like uh, like uh, Bakugo, like his fucking grenade arms that he has wrapped around his wrist. There's a reason why he wears that, and he's limited as to. You know he's limited to the point where he can't wear the outfit, and like this tournament, like like arc, right? Uh, I, like I said, I don't know the name of the uh, the arc or anything, but you know he's restricted to the he's restricted that he can't wear it, you know, and it's fair for everybody else who's participating in it, and I like that. I really really like that. I like how everyone's on an even playing field, you know. Like some people have better quirks than others, but at the end of the end of the day you know they are limited they are human and there is a limit to you know to the extent that they can go through you know with using their quirks and what i also liked is you know they obviously knew that some characters don't really have like like battle re battle ready focused quirks you know like minata like his fucking quirk it's not really like meant for battle but there are episodes where he's shown that you know he can use it like in a battle and it's pretty fucking useful 
And that's the reason why, like, in Season 3, when we get to, you know, like, the whole, like, training camp shit, the reason why he got there is because of him, you know, being smart and not a fucking idiot and used his quirk to his advantage against Midnight. That's who he, that's who he went up against. And, yeah, he, he shows himself off as, like, this really perverted character, but... But you know he's not—he's not an actual fucking idiot. You know he—he knows what he needs to do, and they—you the, know—the writers made it so unique for those scenes. It's like, it's like he's like yeah, he's like really weak and he's not that fast, but he's not an idiot and he knows you know how to use his quirk to his advantage. They did that for all these characters. Like some, it was like yeah, they were like yeah, let's just get this fight out of the way. Like what what showed us fight his first fight and like the um. Like the like sports festival arc, I think that's what it's called actually. Um, like when he when he fought against the the, the other character, uh, I'm not gonna try to pronounce his name. But char characters' names are hard in this series, I swear. But when he went up against him, like the writers were just like, yeah, let's just get this fight out of the way. I didn't like how they did that, but they didn't do that for all the fights, you know. And they gave it you know room for development for the characters. That's what they did for most of the characters, if not all of them. And I really like that. And then the next arc is uh, Hero Killer Stain. Uh, he's very, you know, when they, when they introduced him, he was very mysterious. You know, he had a very interesting character design. His motives were, you know, interesting because he was like, oh, the only person that'll let kill me is All Might. That's, I think that's one of the very first things that he says. He's very mysterious. We don't know what his quirk is. We don't know how strong he is. And, you know, we get a fight with him, with, with Deku... Tenya and Shoto and it's it's such an entertaining fight that fight was so entertaining we, we figure out like uh, like what his motives are like, like extensively uh, he's like supposed to be like connected to the league of villains supposedly but he's not he's just like he's just almost he almost was recruited but he wasn't and then we find out what his quirk is his quirk is being intakes blood uh, from whoever he's wounded or from whoever's blood he's taken, you know, they're paralyzed. And depending on the type of blood that they have, like type A, you know, they're, they're paralyzed for a longer period of time. If they're, if they're type B, it's, it's shorter, you know, it's stuff like that. And it's like, they throw in that element of more information that you need to learn about a character that it's like, Oh, you're going to fucking do that shit. Oh, that's, that's different. And I like that, you know, they make it, they throw in this twist that it's like, yeah, if you don't learn, like, let's say, like, said character's, like, blood type, that might come in, that might come in handy, like, later on down the line, whenever you need to fucking, <laughs> whenever he's, they're fighting the hero killer Stain again, you know, who knows when that'll happen. Like, you, you never know, and, it, and that's something, that's a good amount of information that you need to, like, you know, remember in the back of your head. I like that, and then obviously with the final arc of season two, you know, with them fighting the teachers and stuff, that was that was just really entertaining because it showed a lot of characters and their strengths and their weaknesses and battles. Some people failed. There was a written part. Ultimately, everybody goes to like this training camp. Uh, some of them have to take extensive classes because of them not, you know, properly passing the written exam. But they they got a high enough score as is anyway, so it doesn't matter. But um. You know, I, I just really liked what they did. I really liked what they did with season two. I'm kind of all over the place. I don't really know how to pro properly explain, uh, like episodes or just arcs to happen in season two. I just thought this. I just thought this arc was so good. I like how in season one, in in, in the beginning of season two, we have Deku, and the entire time he has like no idea how to fucking use all for one or not all for one, one for all way fucking ahead of myself there for some reason but one for all you know that's his that's his new quirk that he inherited from all might you know the the previous holder of one for all right he has one for all but the difference is is that deku whenever he uses it he like cripples a fucking arm or one of his fingers and shit and i, I really like the restriction i like the restriction that it's like yeah he has like this super op of uh, like quirk that is literally from the number one hero in the series, in lore, in story, in character. But he's so restricted to how much he can actually use it. And if he does and he overuses it, he has almost permanent damage on his fucking body. And then you go and you train. And then he goes and he trains with uh, All Might's like former teacher. I like how they did that because they introduced, again, an another new character. And this character is in the previous holder of 
one for all he's actually just like a friend of the previous holder one for all that who had given it to all might um and i really liked that i just really liked how you know deku had to go and you know he didn't know how to properly like kind of get the grasp of being able to use one for all without injuring his body but you know he did it in another way that was still interesting and they gave us an interesting enough character so where it's like i can forgive it excuse me it's like i can forgive it right and then even then it's like once he learns how to like not like fuck up his body every single time he uses one for all he can only use up to like five percent currently currently in season two by the end of season two he can only use like five percent of one for all and again i like that restriction he knows how to use it better but there are times there were actually moments where it's like he tries to use one for all but he doesn't like uh, he's he's not concentrating on like you know the limit of his body, and then it actually kind of puts more of a strain on his body because he's trying to use a higher percentage of one for all. And currently he can only really use five percent, and I like the restriction. You know it's only five percent, but he can do a lot with five percent because, you know again with a lot of a lot of other characters he's not a fucking idiot. He's not he's not a, a complete fucking moron. He knows, you know <laughs> he knows what he needs to do. He's very smart when it comes to being in in battle and i really like that i really like this character and i like how the writers are you know so are so restrictive to like how his power you know works because he has one of the most powerful quirks in all the series but it's like it doesn't really fucking matter because you know he can just easily fuck up himself and then they make it to where it's like okay we realize that we should probably you know make it to where he doesn't always fuck up his body because they give it like a reason why um why he needs to not overuse this fucking ability his quirk and then it's like it doesn't matter because he ends up kind of learning how to use it a lot better and i really like that so overall uh, I'm, I'm rambling i know i'm rambling but it's just like there's so much i want to talk about there's so much about this series that i just i just love and i appreciate it just so much of it is just fucking the series is so good. It's so fucking good. Dude, it's so fucking good. It like I, I go I go and I watch the series. The animation is fucking fantastic. Um you know, character design character designs are all fucking incredible. I fucking love all of these characters' designs. Um art style is fucking fantastic. Just so much so much about the series is amazing. The fucking music and shit, dude. The series is so good i haven't found a thing that i haven't really you know liked you know i haven't found something that i just completely fucking hate you know i just i think the series is so good you know if i was if i was to you know compare my hero academia to like dragon ball and uh, well dragon ball super you know because that's the most recent uh series from you know the dragon ball series you know, if I was to compare My Hero Academia to Dragon Ball Super, I think My Hero Academia is just such a it's such a better series than Dragon Ball Super. And, you know, that's that says something when, you know, it's coming from a Dragon Ball fan. I'm a Dragon Ball fan and I'm i I'm only really like a, a like a new My Hero Academia fan. But I, I, I think this series I think the series is it's just a little bit better, if not a lot better than Dragon Ball Super. I'm not saying all of Dragon Ball, but Dragon Ball Super, I think I think it's actually better than Dragon Ball Super. So, and then compared to the Boruto, you know, I don't think that's really like a question. You know, I'm not saying Boruto Naruto Next Generations is a bad series because it's not. It's not a bad series, but like the, the, that series is having a lot of fucking problems, and I I, I can't really get into it because it's sometimes it's just fucking hard. It really is, but um, that's really all I really wanted to talk about. I just wanted to, you know, just say that if you haven't watched My Hero Academia, I don't know how you haven't, but if you haven't watched it, watch season one. And I say this with every with every anime now. If you don't like the first three episodes, then it's like you don't have to continue watching it. But if you want to give it a better chance, then it's like you can go ahead and continue watching it. And if you still don't like it by then, then just you know just stop watching it. But Season one was really good. I fucking love season one. Season two, it just it went above the bar. The season two was so fucking good. 
the music was really fucking good. Animation was really fucking good. And a lot of character moments were were just done so just so so fantastic. Season two took a different direction than season one, and I'm. I'm even more excited for what's to come next in season three, and that's going to be coming out this Saturday. So be uh, voice crack. So be on the lookout for episode episode 39 review for My Hero Academia, and also be on the lookout for episode one of the Persona 5 the animation series because that is also coming out on April 7th this this Saturday. So be on the lookout for both of those videos that will hopefully be coming out very soon. Uh, you know, obviously very soon because it's coming out this Saturday, but you know, I'm gonna have to figure out the upload schedule, but that's basically everything I wanted to say. This series is so good. Go watch it if you haven't for for whatever reason. And can I just say can I just say I fucking love Christopher Savitt as All Might in the English dub. It's so good. I f it's so fucking good. I listened to that yesterday. And that was my first time watching My Hero Academia, a scene from My Hero Academia in the in the dub, and it's so fucking good. <laughs> uh, go watch the series if you haven't. If you haven't, if you if you haven't rewatched it in a while, go ahead and go ahead and rewatch it. It doesn't really take all too long, at least for me, at least. So go and rewatch it. Go rewatch it in the dub if you want, because that's if you're watching the sub. Go watch it in the sub if you watch the dub. That's basically all I wanted to say. That's the end of the video. I love the series and expect more to come from this series. I want to talk more about it. And hopefully that, that, that will become an opportunity that will come in the near future. Anyways, without further ado, that's the end of the video. And if you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, uh, hit the subscribe button if you do want to see more. Even though YouTube subscriptions are really fucking stupid now. And they don't work if you push the notification button, so it doesn't fucking matter. So just hit the subscribe button anyway. Just hit the subscribe button if you did enjoy. Leave a like if you also did enjoy. Uh, if you did also enjoy, you know, just whatever. I'm fucking up the outro. I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, just, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys later.